Hey guys, Harry here, back with another build video. Uh, we've got a garden wall build today. This is just one of the panels that I started yesterday. Uh, it's got a 2x2 two two brick pillar in on one side of it, and it's got a dog leg squint, so I've got a little bit of cut, cutting and jointing to do on that um, to, you know, accentuate the squint on it. But yeah, so the footage is just me doing a bit of pick and dip um, all the way through this. There's going to be multiple parts this video because my iPhone's only at 64 gig um, and uh, I can't hold a lot of footage so I've already got about 40 minutes that I've got to edit down and you know play around with to make the camera angles look good uh, but yeah so I, if you can see in the right hand corner of this video I've actually got it rested on like a Celcon dumpy uh, my camera and I dropped it a few times I actually dropped it down the side of uh, down the side of this wall is where the footing was, so I had to fish my my phone out from uh, from the engineering behind the side of the engineering bricks. But anyway, um, today I yeah I got a bit delayed when setting off on this build. Manager wanted me to do a little bit of snagging on a couple of houses, so that delayed me a couple of hours in the morning. I got end up getting there quite early for once. Uh, it's my first time, and in, in about six months, I've got there before eight o'clock. So I got there at 7 o'clock, uh, cracked on with this bit of snagging I had to do. Q, uh, actually, I got I got first tub out, but everyone else were queued waiting for a tub. So that sort of highlights my point from the last video I made. Well, one of the last videos is why I don't get to site. <laughs> I get to site after 8 o'clock. It's just very, it's very counterintuitive. I still got my mortar. Uh, at, uh, I still got it at... at about 8 o'clock, quarter to 8-ish, I got the mortar. But I, I didn't end up starting this till 9, so... I uh, started off building a big uh, big corner on the squint dog on the squint dog leg side. Uh, built up, you know, tailed out about 8, 9 bricks, something like that. Returned it round, did it all with a level. Uh, put a profile up on the far, return, just take one plumb point away. And then, as you saw in the first two, two uh, pictures, did the similar idea with the other pillar, but I stuck a profile up, take two plumb points away. Uh, one that was a ranging profile, and then the other one was just to take away a plumb point. And then after I'd got up to like you know six or eight course, and then I moved the profile over when I knew it was running true and plumb. And then uh, I basically used the profile to run in and tail round, racking the pillars back as you could see um, from the uh, from the beginning portion of the video. So um, one of the tips, I, I made this video last night, but I was really tired and I've got, as you can see, I'm full of cold. So uh, I did this, I did this build on this particular day uh, with around, I think I had about two and a half hours, three hours sleep. You know, my little boy uh, woke me up and had a screaming fit at like three in the morning. So that was just what it was. Uh, you know, this just shows you can get plenty done with a pick and dip. Uh, I'm building corners for that matter, even with <laughs> minimal sleep. So as you can see, my voice sounds a lot different because I'm, uh, I'm, you know, still got a cold. But as us as price workers, uh, self-employed, we don't get we don't get any sick pay or anything. So there's no time off for us. We just gotta keep keep working. So get the old Vix inhaler and carry on. But um, yeah, I uh, definitely. Uh, D definitely recommend racking the pillars back uh, it just takes away a plumb point every time you reduce the pillar and if you imagine that taking a pillar and flattening it all out you know like a two or even a two skin return like a dog leg uh, you just imagine flattening it out it's like you ha it's like you're building a big corner on a house just in effect if you flatten the pillar out but you've got to just imagine it like that but obviously you turn a corner so there's extra plumb points in it but that's all you've got to think about when you're racking a pillar back. I know in colleges you get taught to build one course at a time if you're doing a two by two brick pillar, one course at a time, plumb, you know, level all the way around, all eight plumb points. But in effect, you can just, you know, keep racking it back and obviously you can keep ranging down to your first course. That's one thing I don't do very often is range down to my first course instead of plumbing the tail down end brick. A lot of the time it's a force of habit and the brick, the type of bricks we're actually using, um, is you know they can they can vary you know the faces on them can vary irises aren't them they're quite curvy brick like heritage brick um 
you can't and especially if you're not setting out the boundary wall yourself because i set this one out i did the footing for it uh, this was originally going to be a staffordshire blue and block rendered wall uh, so if you can as you can see probably the bottom corner um the bottom left corner of the video you can see there's actually blue engineering bricks underneath i actually set that footing out i built the footing and uh, obviously the i set it out myself at first actually i set the wall out straight but it's a series of squints so the the walls are set at, at three separate squints so this panel's on an angle the next one will be on a slight angle but they're very slight i because i asked the site manager can i just say it out myself and say out straight so i worked all the pillars out and everything around where i wanted them and the site engineer went, oh, no, I need it fucking, <laughs> I need it this way. So I was like, oh, right, you set it out. Then you tell me where you want to put your spray marks. So, um, but yeah, that's that's probably one of the, you know, one of the main, main uh, advantages of when you're on a boundary wall and you haven't set it out yourself, a lot of times it don't work bricks. A lot of, a lot of guys who do the footings, they don't, they don't own a brick mate or they don't own a tape measure and they don't, and they don't make it work bricks. It's either got a chalk ice joints in it and you end up needing to put a fucking half three quarter in at one side, you know, like a three quarter against the pillar or you get to the pillar and it's no bomb. That's a really common fucking thing I come across on these boundary walls. But if you get the opportunity to do the footing and set it out yourself, you know, it, it makes the build a lot easier. As you can see today, um, you know, the, from the ending pictures when I'll post in the next parts of this video, you see all the joints more or less uniform they're all the same because i said yeah i set it out with a brick mate so uh i can't you know i can't emphasize those brick mates enough they're really handy obviously you could just do your 225 gauge you know your block gauge on your bricks because that's that's what a brick is 225 with a joint but it's easier just having one of them brick mates it takes the thinking away from it but uh i've actually just reordered another one uh because mine broke that split the end it's been it's been rough for ages it's been like barely goes back in for ages but um i've still got it i've still got it it don't go back in but i've left it in a bucket wrapped up and i'm still going to use it to set out the next uh the next panel when i uh, come to setting that out uh on, on monday uh but yeah i uh it helps you know if you build a foot in yourself then you can range down to the first course you know everything will cut in right but I don't, I don't, don't really tend to range down when I'm building the corner. I tend to just pull them each individual end brick. I know it takes a little bit longer that way, but you know you are always got to check on that your corner's running pretty true. And especially I like to obviously put a tingle at the end of each brick when I uh, move the line up. It's just our habit. I just like doing it. I find it gives the line a bit more stability. It stops the line jumping around. Um, that's another thing I recommend as well when building these garden walls, you know, um i built big corners in on this day uh because i was on my own it was a it was a solo day as uh as one of my mates laughed at me saying that but uh it does make a difference you want to try and stay in one spot if you're on your own anyone who works on their own will tell you that you want to try just i like to work off three boards when i'm on my own so i, I set up the three boards around the corner built it and then three boards at the other side in the pillar built it and then three boards in your running in section i actually went to four boards at one point but then i was just to use the mortar up quite well, quite a lot because with getting started late i ended up working late i ended up working till like four o'clock which i never ever liked to do in the week let alone on a friday when this video was recorded so i ended up working all the way till four o'clock i didn't get to the car what four so uh fucking but i got plenty done um nine or four i had a half an hour break and uh yeah it was it was all right it was all right i've got a lot, of, a lot more footage to come i'm going to talk about different topics in the coming videos um is i'm uh yeah i'm really enjoying this recording myself at work sort of thing because i've always liked making videos i made like you know gaming videos in the past and obviously I don't have much time to game that these days obviously having a kid and working full time and uh, you know taking care of the family but uh it's easy enough to just get your phone out stick it on a stick it on a stack of bricks uh, i've even got my uh, wide angle lens attachment for the iphone uh, i've had it i had it for my uh, training videos but I had this setup i had to keep cutting the camera off because management kept walking past and you know, customers and stuff like that and you don't want to be recording anyone who don't want to be recorded but yeah i seem to be getting quite a lot of support on my first few videos um 
I got 25 subscribers considering I made the channel about a week ago. I'm really happy about that. Thanks a lot everyone who uh, left comments and stuff like that. Uh, I know there's loads of bricklayers out there who watch YouTube videos and, you know, anyone who works on price tends to know it sort of sort of takes up most of your life working there's not a lot, not a lot of brit, brit layers who work on price have more many other hobbies other than brit laying uh, uh me myself obviously doing powerlifting and stuff like that i'm a rare <laughs> bit of a rare rare it's a, it's a it's a rare occurrence that you know most brit ladies you speak to all they do is work so a lot of guys work seven days which i've never been um in favor of you know i've done the last time i did a saturday was 2019 i think and uh, I, don't, I don't like to do Saturdays, especially with the uh, the climate how it is these days. Uh, Monday to Friday, you've done enough. It don't matter if you've lost time in the week, work a bit later. You know what I mean? I'm always, like I say, I'd rather work a couple hours longer in a day instead of giving up my weekend. It be, you know, makes a lot more sense to me. But anyway, so yeah, um, it's coming towards the end of the video, I think. I think I've got 12 minutes of footage here, so I'm probably not used to talking for this length of time. Uh, actually, I'd like to go over a couple of other things before the video ends. Um, as you can see, when I was doing the pick and dip, I was using the wrist twist technique. Uh, I got this idea off a guy called Brick Lane Fundamentals. Uh, I forgot the guy's name, to be honest. I'm really terrible with names, but um, he's got a channel called Brick Lane Fundamentals, and uh, I saw him doing the brick, the uh, sort of the twist, the tw wrist twist, like we're letting the mortar come off the back of your trowel technique when he uh, when you put it down, you know, for the standard pick and dip. I find it a lot faster to be honest, and and I, I find it is suited with a Philadelphia. So if you've got a if you've got a Philadelphia trowel and old Philadelphia that's getting worn down, or even if you want to do it with an eleven inch, this guy was doing it. That I saw he was doing it with an eleven inch trowel, and it looked pretty smooth and. Um, you know, you'll see videos of guys fucking flying them in, pick and dip. This, you know, there's that. You know, the main, main guy who popularised it was the Charlie Collison, guy from Essex. Um, there's other guys as well. There's other guys doing it on YouTube. Uh, you see a lot of the time, you know, guys fucking doing a little bit of uh, the director's cut where they just set up, you know, run it smashing twenty bricks, something pick and dip, and you look where the, you look where the bricks are to the line, and they're fucking all over the place. Uh, but you know, in all my videos, I'm I'm recording actual price work that I'm doing on site, and it's you know to a really good standard. So, uh, you know, I don't I'm not I'm not a fan of rushing. Uh, I just like to take my time. I might be steadier than other people, but I pride myself on the quality of work I turn out. So, that's all I'm uh, that's all I'm about speeding up, but maintaining a really good standard of work. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next part of the uh, of the garden wall video. See you later. Have a good weekend.